we bowl off Mellow TV Sports with cricket as the West Indies senior women's team along with the A team are both set for action later this month with a tour to the Caribbean by Pakistan. The senior team will pace the Pakistanis in an eight-match white ball series, while there will be a six-match white ball series between the West Indies Women A team and the Pakistan Women A team. Both series will take place in Antigua from June 30 to July 18. Pakistan will arrive in the Caribbean on Wednesday ahead of the T20 International Series, which bowls off on June 30. The T20s and T20 A-team matches will be played on the same day and at the same venues as double headers. The teams will then switch gears as they head into a five-match one-day international series and three-match A-team one-day series starting on July 7 and 10 respectively. Matches will be at the Sir Vivian Richards Stadium and the Coolidge Cricket Ground. The ODI series will be vital preparation for both teams as they will face each other in Cricket World Cup qualifiers that are due to take place in Sri Lanka in December for one of the three remaining qualifying spots for the World Cup in New Zealand 2022. Today's fourth day of the inaugural ICC World Test Championship final between India and New Zealand in Southampton was completely rained out, making two days lost to rain. Only 141.1 overs have been possible so far, with New Zealand currently on 101 for two, trailing India by 116 runs. A reserve sixth day is in place, so two days remain, but a draw is now the clear favorite for the inaugural final. On to some Olympic news now. Organizers will allow up to 10,000 Japanese fans at Tokyo 2020 Olympic venues, despite warnings from medical experts. Overseas spectators are already banned, but organizers said domestic fans could attend, providing crowds did not exceed 50% of a venue's capacity. Fans will not be allowed to shout or speak loudly and must wear face masks at all times while in venues. The Olympics are scheduled to begin on July 23, while the Paralympics follow a month later from August 24. Spectator numbers for the Paralympic Games will be confirmed on July 16. The decision to allow spectators comes despite the release of a report last week by Japanese medical experts that said holding the Games without spectators was the least, ri least risky and most desirable option. Meanwhile, a member of Uganda's Olympic squad has become the first to test positive for COVID-19 on arrival in Japan. Uganda is experiencing a surge in cases, which forced the government to tighten lockdown measures on Friday. The unnamed Ugandan was part of a nine-member squad who had all been fully vaccinated. The group, which includes boxers, coaches and officials, had also tested negative before leaving the country. One of them, however, tested positive on arrival at Tokyo's Narata Airport on Saturday and was quarantined at a government-designated facility. The rest of the squad left by chartered bus for Osaka in western Japan, where they are to train ahead of the Games. Still on track and field news, Alison Felix yesterday made her fifth Olympic team and first as a mother, following a second place finish in the 400 meters at the U.S. track and field Olympic trials in Eugene, Oregon. Running from lane eight, Felix was in fourth place as the race entered the final home stretch to the finish line, but she narrowly caught two opponents ahead of her to record a season's best time of 50.02 seconds. Kwani Rekhez, who won the race, and Wade Line Jonathas also qualified for the Olympic team. The 35-year-old Felix made her Olympic debut in 2004 and said this will be her final games. She has won nine Olympic medals, including six goals over her illustrious career and is one of the most decorated athletes in the history of the sport. 
We kick it over to Football News now. Jamaica International Corey Burke was on the score sheet last evening as he helped the Philadelphia Union rally from two goals down to draw 2-2 with Atlanta United. Burke saw his international captain Andre Blake beaten twice but halved the deficit in the 84th minute before a wonder strike from Jakob Glenis from 35 yards out leveled the tie. Philadelphia extended its league unbeaten run to six matches and moved into a tie on points with Orlando for second in the Eastern Conference. On to basketball news now, Devin Booker's first career triple-double helped the Phoenix Suns beat the Los Angeles Clippers 120-114 in Game 1 of the NBA Western Conference Finals. Booker stepped up in the absence of star Chris Paul to score 40 points, hold 13 rebounds and dished out 11 assists. The Clippers playing in the conference finals for the very first time will aim to secure the Western Conference Series against the Suns in Game 2 tomorrow. The Atlanta Hawks will face the Milwaukee Bucks in the Eastern Conference Finals as well. Atlanta defeated the Philadelphia 76ers 103-96 in the deciding game of their best of seven semifinal series. Kevin Herter scored a playoff career high 27 points, while NBA All-Star Trey Young finished with 21 points and 10 assists. John Collins had 14 points and 16 rebounds, and Danilo Gallinari came off the bench to score 17 points as the Hawks reached their first Eastern Conference Final in six years. They faced the Bucs in Game 1 on Wednesday. Now to end tonight's sports package, we present you with the play of the night, Terry Rozier's dunk versus the Brooklyn Nets. Last night, Irving upset, didn't get the call. He had, oh, oh my goodness! Terry Rozier! How do you do? Sees Durant coming, he knows he's going to have resistance. Punch it through, young fella. And those are the stories making sports news tonight. We now head back to the news desk with Tamara McHale.